Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and welcome back to not just another video, but an update to one of my most watched videos on this channel. So if you follow me on Instagram already, you would have seen that over the last couple of weeks, I have been making changes to this room, but I didn't want to lose the overall look of the setup, but I was ready to make some changes. So over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the build and work that's gone into this room. So if you're not interested in seeing how I demolished the room and you just want to see the finished tour, you can skip ahead. I've also put a link in the description to my entire kit list too. So if there is something that you like in the setup, you can see it there. So I needed to completely empty the room for the work to start. Literally everything was removed. The shelving was emptied and taken out, the TV was taken off the wall, along with everything behind it. The biggest job to do was actually to unplug everything from behind the TV unit, which always takes longer than expected. Over the next few days, the chimney wall came down, which I'll tell you what, I massively underestimated just how much dust it would create around the entire house. But as it was a false chimney, luckily no structure support was required for upstairs, and the hole in the wall then needed to be bricked up. I had some new electrics chased into the walls, along with a port that would allow me to run cables from the TV to down to the cabinet again, hiding them in the wall. This is something I'd always recommend doing if you are renovating a room. And as soon as the electrics were in, the walls were boarded up ready for plastering. Next up, the walls needed skimming, so instead of blending it into the existing wall, the entire wall was done, which obviously makes sense. And a few days later, the electrics were finished and the plugs were added to the top and the bottom of the wall. You can also see here that the ports, so the ports behind the TV, this is what they look like. And this allows me to feed cables from the TV down to the cabinet. It's obviously got bristles at the top and the bottom as well. And it's got a tube that's hidden in the wall, which makes it easier to pull the cables through. Then the wall was given a white undercoat ready to paint. And this really brightened the room up and started to feel like a normal room again. Finally, the gray was going back on the wall. And this is exactly the same as what I had last time as well. So I've gone for Dulux Chic Shadow. And this is the same color that I've been using around the house since I bought it in 2012. Now the walls were painted, I was ready to wall mount the TV again. And this time, as I wanted it central to the sofa, I lined it up perfectly with the opposite wall. Now here's a little trick when you are drilling holes in a wall. I always put a post-it note, or you can put an envelope and stick it to the wall. And it means that when you're drilling, any of the dirt and the brick dust will be caught in that, as opposed to landing on the floor. I made some pilot holes before making the proper holes bigger banged in some roll plugs and took my trusty TV bracket that I've been using for about the last six or seven years and it's been used on five different TVs now and I attach that to the wall and it's always worth putting some weight on it as well once you've installed it just to make sure that it's safe um, you're always better off pulling it out the wall now than you are when you've got the TV on it now one thing that I wanted to change was the speaker placement which meant that the right speaker hole in my custom built unit was no longer needed but I didn't want to leave it blank so I measured it up and I made a door out of some plywood I added some panel into the front, glued it, painted it, then I finished it off with a couple of hinges as well. And I think it looks really great and I think it ties in nicely with the overall look of the unit. A few days later I had the carpets changed so everything needed to come out again, but it gave me a chance to relay the speaker cables around the room. Finally the carpet is in and it looks like a new room again. So I've gone for a slightly darker shade this time, although you can't really tell. Now it's time to move everything back in, plug it all in, plug the speakers in, the cables, the consoles, the lights, dress the shelving unit and make sure everything works again. So if you've made it this far in, I hope you've enjoyed the work that went into this transformation. But now it's time to look around the finished room and to see some of the new items that I've added since my last TV setup tour. So I'm still using the 55 inch OLED from LG, which is the C9 model from last year. And although it is over a year old now, it's still absolutely awesome. The picture quality is crazy good. It doesn't matter what content I stream to it. It always looks so clear and so sharp. Plus the black levels are perfect on this. The biggest downside though is it's very reflective, but as my room isn't super bright and now that the TV is further away from the window, it's not too much of an issue for me. So I watch a lot of movies during the week and I play a lot of games on the PS4 and both look great on this set. And although this is a 2019 model, it's already next gen ready, so it's perfect for the new PS5 and the Xbox Series X because it's got HDMI 2.1, 120Hz and G-Sync enabled as well. In fact, the C9 isn't much different to the 2020 CX or GX in terms of spec. And as you can see here, it's super, super thin. And I'm using a swivel bracket to mount it to the wall. And this lets me tilt it in and out and left and right, although it's usually pointing straight ahead. But this bracket only cost me £20 or $30 from Amazon. You've probably noticed that I've got lights behind the TV as well. And these actually give a nice ambient glow day and night. And it actually helps with eye fatigue as well. 
So I've got a five meter strip of Lifex Z strip. And this is stuck onto the back of the TV and then it's curled around the edges. I usually have it set to white during the day, but you can have it set to any color. So on a night, I usually have it set to kind of like a, a retro vibe. And this is all customizable through the app. I've also got a couple of other Lifex bulbs in floor standing lamps around the room. Both of these lamps that I'm using are actually from Ikea, but the bulbs can be synced with the TV to create a scene. Now there's one thing that I hate to see in my setups and that's cables. So I don't like seeing wires or leads at all, which is why I've gone to great lengths to hide them in the wall behind the TV. So what I've actually done is I've got the entrance hole at the top directly behind the TV, then I've got the exit at the bottom behind the cabinet. And swapping them out is really easy, I can just feed them through, but I have already replaced all of the cables with HDMI 2.1. And then moving on to the cabinet, which I actually designed and had made about four or five years ago. So the cabinet is made from MDF with a pine fascia and it measures 150 centimeters wide by 50 centimeters deep and 65 centimeters high. And the thickness is three and a half centimeters. And it cost me about 550 pounds back then, but it can easily hold 70 plus kilos in weight and it's really, really heavy. So I wanted the TV unit to be flush to the wall. So what I did is I actually cut the skirting boards out directly behind the unit. And then when it slides back, it means it touches the wall. It does mean that I cannot move the unit left and right, but to be honest, it'll always be central to the TV and central to the sofa, so I don't really need to be able to move it. And then on the inner shelf, I've actually got some wooden PlayStation icons, which I had made for me by Geek Made Designs uh, earlier this year. And these replaced the plastic ones that I used to have. And since then, they've actually gone on to sell these on their own website. So if you do like these, you can go ahead and buy exactly the same set. Uh, there is a link in my kit list as well. Then I've got my center speaker channel, and this is a monitor audio bronze speaker, which I've had now for a couple of years, and the sound and clarity on this is awesome. And here I've got my PS4 console. So this is the 500 million edition. I used to have this wall mounted behind my TV if you've watched my previous setup, but I decided that with the new consoles coming out this year, I'm probably not going to wall mount again, so I've decided to put this on the shelf instead. So something else that you'll notice is the hole on the right hand side where the speaker used to be is obviously now gone and there's a door there instead. So as I showed earlier, I obviously made that door to fit the space. But I could have had the whole unit remade. But to be honest, I thought it adds a little bit of character as opposed to just having two massive doors on the front. And also it means I've gained quite a cool little storage area as well. So inside, I've actually got a dual charging dock for the PS4 and I've got my Astro A50s headset dock as well. So I might add a shelf in here in the future at some point and it means that I can add two different charging docks and I can obviously add more items in there as well. Then onto the inside of the cabinet where I hide everything out of sight. And I'll just go through each item here that I've got. Drop any comments if you wanna know more about them. So I'm using a five port gigabit network switch. And this provides a wired connection to my PlayStation and TV. And then I've got a cable going out to the router in the hallway. So these are only about £25 or $30 for this small one. You can obviously buy larger ones as well, but at the moment I don't need any more than five ports. Then these two little white boxes that you've got here, well these are the hubs for both Philips Hue and Hive. So that's my lights and my heating system. And unfortunately they do need to be wired into the router to work, unlike my LifeX lights, which are just Wi-Fi only. Looking at my game collection here, I don't actually have that many physical games, as I mainly buy digital these days for convenience of switching between different games. But here are the few that I do have, so I've got a few PlayStation games, a couple of Steelbooks, and my Nintendo Switch games as well. Then I've got the original Nintendo Switch here, and this is docked most of the time, but this is a great little console for party games like Mario Kart and Mario Party, and I'm also using a couple of carry cases for it. Now, although it rarely leaves the house, this is where I actually store the games as well, but these are from Satisfy, and I've also got a couple of spare controllers that I use for it as well. And then moving on to the amp that I've got. So this is the AV receiver that I'm using. This is the Onkyo 686. It's a 7.1 receiver, and I use this to power all the speakers around my room. Now what's great about this AVR is it's got Apple AirPlay and Chromecast built in. So it means that I can actually group the amp with my Google Home speakers. Then when I say play Spotify, for example, it will play on all of the speakers around my house and it will include the speakers in this room as well. So as the receiver is inside the cabinet, it means that when the doors are closed, I cannot control it using the remote. So what I've done is I've actually added a magic eye and I've placed one of them in front of the receiver behind the door when it's closed and the other one on the front of the center speaker. Now it's actually been here for about five years and no one has ever noticed it and it works every single time. So the first thing that you'll notice about my speakers now is their placement is far better than it ever was. So I'm still using the monitor audio bronze range around the room and they sound incredible. So I've got three up front plus the two surround speakers behind the sofa on the wall and they really create an awesome atmosphere. So my right channel is on a mission stand set stand if that's how you pronounce it. 
and the stands are 60 centimeters tall. They weigh quite a lot, although I couldn't find the exact kilograms. They're made from metal and they have spikes underneath. Also, they have awesome cable management. Now, the speaker cables can actually be hidden in the tube itself. My only issue with this though is the cable can still be seen at the base of the stand. So I've actually wrapped the cables in black tape, but in the future I might drill a hole in the base of the stand so I can feed it underneath instead. Next to the speaker, I've actually got a new plant here, and this is a plant in a Marks and Spencer's plant stand. And this is the largest version that they had, so if you are interested, again, there is a link in my kit list. My left channel is on a shelving unit. That's also 60 centimeters high. So both speakers are exactly the same distance apart from the TV as well, so it's almost perfect. And then finally, we've got the rear speakers, and these are wall mounted just above ear height behind the sofa, and they're angled slightly as well. Again, these are far better placed than they ever used to be. So another piece of furniture that I've got in this room that I get quite a lot of comments about on Instagram is this shelving unit. So it's from Next, it costs 500 pounds and it measures 135 centimeters wide by 185 centimeters tall. And what I like about this unit is it's really, really heavy and it's really solid as well. So it's really well made. So the shelves are wood and they are attached to this black metal frame. And it has a kind of an industrial look to it, but I think it adds a nice bit of warmth to the otherwise gray room and I really do like the look of it. So here I've got a few different items on show ranging from my original N64 console and this used to sit under my TV only up until recently. And this is complete with GoldenEye, one of my all time favourite games. Then there's a wooden table football on one shelf and then on another shelf I've got my Ellie statue from The Last of Us Part 2 and that came with the collector's edition this year. I've also got a few PlayStation controllers on display as well. And I've also got this wooden stand made by Geek Made Designs. So I've always got at least one controller sat in this stand. I've got the Harman Kardon one speaker and that's one of my Google speakers that I use around the house. Again, in this room, I practically only use it for voice commands. And something I mentioned earlier as well is my hate for wires and cables. And this is the same for this shelf. So what I've actually done here is all of the cables and wires that you can see that come from the charging dock and the speakers and so on, they're all taped to the back of the frame with black insulation tape. So you can't quite see them, but it means that they're nice and tidy. And when you're looking at the shelf, you can't see any cables at all. So I obviously have seating in this room and the main sofa that I have is looking a little bit tired these days so I'm not going to feature it in this video but I am on the lookout for one and hopefully I'll get one before Christmas. But I do have this Sherlock chair from Next and this is in a nice dark textured grey with a button back. It's so comfy just for chilling out on. I've also got this cable knitted footstool as well. This often moves around the room so it's featured in different posts and different pictures and so on but it's really cheap and it only cost me £30. I do have more plans in the pipeline though for this room, it's not quite finished yet. Obviously I want to get a new sofa, something that will complement the Sherlock chair that I've already got. I also want to add some panelling to the wall behind the sofa, and this is something that I have around the house already, so it'd be quite nice to have that on this back wall as well. I'm also thinking of adding a bigger TV. So the TV that I've got here, this is obviously the 55 inch OLED, and I think it looks a little bit too small now. Now that it's not cooped up in a corner, I think I could probably go for a 65 inch OLED, maybe even bigger although I don't want to lose the balance of the room if I go too big. Obviously we've got the next gen consoles coming out as well, so we've got the PS5 and the Xbox Series X coming out next month, and I have pre-ordered both, so I will be adding both of these to the setup. They will probably go under the TV, so where the current PS4 is, one will go there, and then the other one will probably go in the TV unit itself. So overall I'm really happy with the changes that I made to this room. It's exactly what I wanted. It's given me more space, and it's made the room feel bigger and brighter, and it's now got the perfect viewing angles for watching movies, and the sound is so much better from the speakers. If you've got any questions or suggestions for a new video, please drop them in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching. I hope this video was useful to you, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time.